Welcome to Door of Hope TV Show. God has opened a wide and effective door in the Holy Land for Living Bread International to reach out to the refugees. Living Bread International is serving God in ancient Jericho, Bethlehem, Hebron, Jerusalem, and throughout the good land flowing with milk and honey. The possibilities through this ancient door of hope that the Lord has opened are endless and full of blessings. I say, I'm ready. You ready? Amen. Isn't that funny? The work of your hands and the walk of your feet, Sherry. Yeah, because some new doors are opening up. Um, that, you know, and just be in prayer for Sherry. And I'm sure Elvin, the work of your hands, be in prayer for Elvin. Walk of your feet, work of your hands. That's establishing the walk of your feet and the work of your hands. Yeah. We say, yeah. Yeah, we tarry till we've been clothed with power from on high and let the Lord establish our walk and our talk and fill our backpacks full of oil. <laughs> I say yes and amen. Wow, great prophecy. Nadine, keep seeing. Yeah. Amen. Well, holy and righteous Father, I thank you. Today is about you, and I thank you, Lord. We're going to go wherever you want to go. She just prophesied she saw the king walk into the house. And I felt something shift. I mean, I felt there was a lot of activity going on. You know, some were late, some were coming for business. I mean, there was just a lot of activity going on. And I thought, Lord, there seems to be a whole lot going on. But I just feel like Patrick said yesterday, cloud by day and fire by night. There's something about that fire by night coming our way. Something about that fire. Yeah, something about burning in that fire. Amen? And when he said that, yeah, cloud by day, fire by night, I thought, whoa. And God's saying, take the night shift. Amen. Take the night shift. Yeah. Shift, shift, shift. And we say yes and amen. We're going to take the night shift. Amen? So I kind of, I want to, give you some scriptures today, and then I want uh, Elvin and Sherry to come up and leave it, lead us in that song, Let the Fire Fall, because I feel the Lord's going to unlock something today that is just going to carry us in to the Monday night watch. Amen? Yeah. 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 In 1 Kings 18, yeah. And it came to pass after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. And Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, and there was a severe famine in Samaria. And Ahab had called Obadiah, who was in charge of the house. Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. So it was while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, Obadiah had taken a hundred prophets and hid them, fifty to a cave, and fed them bread and water. And it says, And Ahab said to Obadiah, Go into the land of all the springs of the water and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mule alive, that we will not have to kill any livestock. And I feel, you know, there's been some seasons where we've just been out there kind of looking for some grass. I mean, there's been some dry seasons. Like, wow, where are we going to find some grass, Lord? You know, and it said it hadn't rained, and we've been doing rain dances. And I thank you, Lord. We're going to be faithful with those rain dances because this man said to me one day, he says, how do you do a rain dance? I says, you dance for the Lord and declare the rain of heaven is falling. That's how you do a rain dance. Amen. Take him back what was stolen while we're at it. While we're at it, we're going to take the rain dance for the Lord. Yeah. And so what happened is Obadiah's on his way and Elijah met him. And he fell on his face. Is that you, my Lord, Elijah? 
And he said, it is I. Go tell your master Elijah is here. And the man said, wow, how have I sinned? You trying to deliver your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? And he says, in verse 11, he says, and now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here? He says, it'll come to pass as soon as I'm gone from you. And look at this. The spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know. Is that amazing? It, the spirit of the Lord's going to take you to a place I do not know. I mean, the Lord must have been lifting these prophets up and down back then. Because he said, you know, I'm going to go tell my master you're here and the spirit of the Lord's going to put you on another place. And it says, was not it reported to my Lord whom I, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, how I hid him? And I'm paraphrasing a little in verse 14. Go tell your master Elijah's here. And he will kill me. And Elijah said, as the Lord lives, I will surely present myself to him today. And then Elijah goes to meet Ahab. And Ahab said, is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered. He says, I'm not having troubled Israel, but you and your fathers have. And look at verse 19. Gather all of Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. And Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah called to the people, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. And the people answered, not a word. And so then he said, let's give us two bowls. And let's choose one bowl for themselves and cut it to pieces. But put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other bowl and lay it on the woods. But put no fire under it. And then he says, you call on the name of your gods, and I'll call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, he is God. Come on. The God that answers by fire, he is God. And I feel there's a showdown in the spirit today. And I feel that there's something shifting in the spirit today. And it's almost like the Lord's saying, if Baal can send fire, then call upon Baal. But if the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one that sends fire, then call upon the living God for the fire to fall. Because there's a showdown and the enemy's about to be busted up and burn up by the fire of God. Yeah. And so they go on and, and it says that they went, he put a bull and he put no fire on it. And they took the bull and it was noon. Oh, Baal, hear us. And I want to tell you, you might be calling out to Buddha. You might be calling out to your God. But if you're not calling out, oh, Jesus Christ, oh, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, you're calling on deaf ears. But when you call upon the living God, something happens. And it says, they, they, all the way to noon, they kept crying out for their God. And I've told many people that have come up to me. And they said, I'm very, very sick. My child's sick. My boy's in prison. And I say to him, how long are you going to call on a God that doesn't answer? How long are you going to call on a God with deaf ears? I said, it's time to call upon the living God. You want to see a response? You call upon the Father in the name of Jesus and watch the heavens open and watch your baby be healed and watch the fire fall and watch your kid come out of the prison. And it says right here, and oh, Baal, hear us. And they leaped about the altar they made. And Elijah started to mock them and said, cry louder, because if he's God, he's either meditating or he's busy or he's on a journey. Maybe he's sleeping. You know, he said, maybe your God's sleeping. Our God ne neither sleeps nor slumbers. Amen. And they cried aloud and they cut themselves as was their custom, with knives and lances, and the blood gushed out of them. And I want to say something. 
This is a picture of dead religion. They cut them. They don't necessarily cut themselves, but they do a whole bunch of work till the whole team feels like everybody's cutting themselves. You know, it's just a whole bunch of dead works. And that's what dead religion looks like. And they're crying and they're trying to get heaven open. And what it really feels like in the spirit is they're cutting up themselves, trying to get the attention of their God. And it says here, they cried aloud, cut themselves until the blood gushed out. And watch this in verse 29. When midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the evening sacrifice. Evening sacrifice. There was a shift from the day into the night because now it was an evening sacrifice. Yeah. And it says, Elijah said, come near to me. And all the people came near to him. And it was the evening sacrifice. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Now, come on, it was no longer midday. Now it was evening. The night had come. Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, and said, Israel will be your name. Then with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seas of seed. He put the wood in order, he cut the bull in pieces, and he laid it on the wood. And then he said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. What's so amazing is this was a, a severe famine in the land, and it hadn't rained. And now he's taken these four water pots. It's so interesting. The other day, God told me to buy four water pots. They're sitting right there by the back door. He said, buy four water pots. Isn't this interesting here? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God just tells you to do something, and you just do it. You know, look what he told Ezekiel. Cut your hair and go burn some of it in the fire. I mean, you just do what God says. The other day he says, buy four water pots. Wow. And pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Then they said, do it a third time. And I'm just thinking of all this precious water being poured out on the sacrifice in the time of famine, in the time of famine and drought. So the water ran around the altar, and he also filled the trench with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are the God in Israel, and I am your servant, and done according to your word. Now, I feel that we can prophesy, Lord God, you are the God in Israel, and we at Living Bread are your servants and are doing these things according to your word. They move the shift from the morning to the evening sacrifice. They got the four water pots. They're already in the house, people. This is pretty exciting. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Yeah, at the time of the evening sacrifice. Ooh, I feel the fire falling already. Yeah. And what you don't know out there, God just told us to shift our morning watch to the evening. Now, he just told us to do it two days ago. One day ago, wasn't it? One day ago. And now here he's given us this word. They shifted. It was the evening sacrifice. And the fire began to fall. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, let it be known that you're the God in Israel. Hear me, O oh God, hear me, that the people may know you are the Lord God and you have turned their hearts back to you. You know what? I just want you to know is we take this evening sacrifice. We're starting Monday. 
as we take the evening sacrifice, I feel there's going to be a shift and the hearts of the people are coming back to the Lord. I feel people are going to come off the streets. I feel that the house is going to be full. And I feel that God is about to pour out some holy fire on a dry and thirsty people. Yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, it's going to happen. He says, hear me, hear me, O Lord. These people may know that you're the Lord God, that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Whoa. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood in the stones in the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Wow. Wow. And I just feel, you know, those rain dances bring the water, and then the fire falls. Amen? Amen. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. They, been to, they started making that sweet confession. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Amen? This is just totally, totally awesome. And then Elijah said, so we can see prophetically what God's doing, even starting with the four pots. Four, he had us just go buy four pots. When was that? Two weeks ago? One week ago? One week ago. We got four pots sitting there. This is just amazing. It was amazing. Wow. Then he said, shift to the night. Now he's given us this word. It was in the evening sacrifice, the fire fell. Cloud by day, fire by night. And then the people began to make confession, he is God. Then, a lot, then look at this wonderful thing that happens. Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to Brook Kishon and executed him, them there. And then Elijah said to Ahab, go eat and drink, for there's an abundance of rain. Look at that order. The fire falls. Amen. The fire falls, right? The enemy, the spirit of false prophecies destroyed. The Baals destroyed. The prisoner, the, the one that's holding the people prisoner, you know, could be depression, all kinds of things. Perversion, it all falls, okay? They're executing the enemy. And then Elijah says, come on. There's an abundance of rain. Yeah. Wow. Can you see the picture of what we're moving into? Can you see it, people? Come on. Can we grab hold of this as a team? We're shifting from the morning to the evening sacrifice. Yeah. The fire's going to fall. The enemy's going to be destroyed. And there's going to be an abundance of rain. And look what it says. For there is the sound of an abundance of rain. And I feel it's in the sound. You're going to feel that abundance of rain. The sound of heaven is coming through the fire. The sound of heaven is coming through the fire. Look at the order. Look at the holy order of God. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says, wow. And then he went to, he got into a birthing position. And he said to his servant, go up and look towards the sea. And he said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. It's interesting. He told them to look towards the sea, S-E-A. And I'm feeling the Lord saying to the team at Living Bread, look and see, S-E-E, -E. look and see. There's an abundance of rain coming. And that we'll have to ask him what the seven times means. And it came to pass the seventh time there was the cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising up out of the sea. And it came out of the sea, S-E-A. But I'm telling you, prophets of God, it's going to come out of the sea, S-E-E. -E. If you can see it, you can have it, saith the Lord. If you can see it, you can have it. Just like when Elijah was going up in the chariot of fire, and Elisha 
said, please, let me have a double portion of your spirit. And he said, this is a hard thing you ask, but if you see me when I go up, you will surely have it. And God's saying to the prophets of God, if you can see it, if you can see the rain coming, you can have it, says the Spirit of the Lord. If you can see it coming, you can have it, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on. There was a sound of rain, a sound. It says a sound of abundance of rain. Yeah, this is so amazing. This is our season. We're looking at our season, you guys. We're looking at walking in the fire. We're looking at the sound of rain coming. We're looking at just being in the abundance of rain. It's coming. It's our season. It's the promise of God. It will surely happen. It will happen. Yeah. And then look what happened. He, in 44, he passed the seventh time. There was a cloud rising up. And he said, go up to Ahab. Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime. The sky became black with clouds and there's a heavy rain. And Ahab rode away to Jezreel. And look at this. Guess what happens then? Woo! This is hot. The hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he outran the chariot. Come on, the exploits come in the abundance of rain. The supernatural comes in the abundance of rain. Come on, he's outrunning a chariot. What a season. Come on, what a God. What a season. What a God. Yeah, this is good news. Come on. We're going to stand on 1 Kings 18 this entire season. We're going to watch the fire fall. We're going to watch the abundance of rain come. And we're going to watch exploits happen. And we're going to watch the enemy be defeated in the name of Jesus. What a season. What a season. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you. Let your fire fall. And maybe you're dry and thirsty out there. Maybe you've never experienced the rain of heaven or the fire of God. Well, I want to tell you, here's an invitation. Come to the city of the great king and drink the rain of heaven with us. And just stand with us shoulder to shoulder as the fire falls. As the fire falls. Because the fire is surely going to fall in Jerusalem. The fire is going to fall. And there's going to be an abundance of the sound of rain. It's going to happen. And exploits are going to break out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, now I, the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. Minister Karen Dunham of Living Bread International, an NGO and an international church is being used mightily of God to lead teams to the poorest of all the refugees. There are 27 refugee camps in the Promised Land. The people are in need and not forgotten by the Most High God. His arms are stretching down to the deepest depths with conquering love that is melting hearts and releasing hope. This is a place of joy in God where you know His perfect will as you bring Him pleasure. You too can labor in this sweet spot of His Spirit destiny will rise up and you will never look back as he stretches his arms out through you with conquering love flowing in all you do. You can sow into heaven as you pray into the move of his spirit as you fund the Lord's desire to reach the poor. Sow your faith seeds unto the Most High God and reap the heavens where his grace and favor freely flow. My name is Nate Ritter. I am from the States, from the state of Michigan. And I came here to uh, Jerusalem um, for four months, or three months actually. I've been here four months now. I extended my stay for an additional year. And 
I've got to, I came here with not knowing what to expect in the Middle East, never been to the Middle East before. Um, and so I've got to experience the Jews and the Arabs. And one of the, one of the pleasures of being here was experiencing Karen's ministry, Living Bread. Um, it blows my mind what they do here. And uh, they're just taking care of the poor and loving on the orphans and widows and the things that Jesus told us to do, but put it into practical use. And um, so I, I love the ministry and anything to do with it. I, I just want to find time to serve if I can. And it's just, it's a real blessing. Uh, they, they do so much for the world. And like today, I, I got to hear Karen speak for a little bit, and she just reminds you of how the Lord sees everybody, the young, old, uh, the babies, the blood that's shed. The Lord doesn't let any of that slide. He knows everything that happens and he loves us all. He, um, he predestined us. And so it's good to see that people are cared for, the, some of the, the refugee camps and stuff, that they take care of the people there. Um, these, are the, these are the ones that are neglected by so much of the world. And they take the time out to love on them. And that's, to me, that's the gospel. So it's, um, I love it. It's a, it's a pleasure. Hi. This is Pastor Karen Dunham, Living Bread International Church, in the good land flowing with milk and honey. Here we are in Gaza. What you see behind me and all around me is the city of Gaza. Thank you for praying for us and sending volunteers and funding us as we take the word of God into the city of Gaza. What a great and awesome God we serve. Lord bless you. Here we are in Jerusalem, the city of the great king. We have moved our corporate offices to Jerusalem. I want to say thank you, God. Thank you out there for sending volunteers. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for funding us. And I just want to say thank you from Mount Zion. Lord bless you. The bridegroom is coming for a spotless bride. Join with us in this glorious celebration. Your support is making a difference. Thank you for watching Door of Hope.